Hi, this is John from Chicago, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing you the Yashin um, Twig uh, 115. Uh, this is a copy of the Racer X frame, so it's been criticized a lot, but the price is darn good. It's um, about $85, and it's a heck of a machine for $85. Well, a lot of the, some of the reviewers said, uh, well, what you could do is go buy uh, the frame, uh, throw this frame out, and put the actual Racer X frame on it. Um, but, um, um, so, um, I ended up buying two of these since I thought they were a pretty good deal for $85. Um, one I've been flying for about four or five months, and the, this one here I just picked up, uh, got in the mail back a couple days ago. Um, what I found is if you, um, the original one was flying bad with these propellers, these are old gem fan propellers. Um, uh, they just don't work really well and that's what most of the reviewers have said and some of the ones now have said these new um, gem fan um, tri-blade propellers, the uh, 0316 um, props really work good. Um, so I put these on and it really improved. Uh, one of the other problems that I found was the angle of the camera. It's up against the um, top right there, so that's as much as it'll go, and that's only about 36 degrees. Uh, so you really need to get up to 45 degrees to fly fast and be nice to even get a little bit bigger of a camera angle. So with that, I broke uh, the frame, the cockpit that I had, their canopy in there, and the screw hole broke, and it also cracked um, down here. So I'm going to take a soldering iron just to see if I could make this canopy come back a little further. Just take the soldering iron and run it through there, and it looks like that's going to work. So... Yeah, that's look like it's working real good. Um, so I'm going to take my new canopy and try that same thing. Let's just see what the difference is. Oh yeah, looks like it took a eighth of an inch off of there. Um, so I'm going to take the new canopy and see if I could do the same thing. The other thing I have to do is a drill a hole in the top of here. I'm going to take the soldering iron and put a hole also in the top of that, maybe even a secondary hole to loop a zip tie because this antenna is pretty loose. But let me um, try the new, new canopy here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it worked on the old one before I messed up a new canopy. And this is my only backup one. Okay, I think that will at least get me back to 45 degrees. I'll have to put the camera in there and actually see what I could get. And now for the specs. The um, machine Twig uh, 115 has a 115 millimeter wheelbase. Uh, the weight is 62 grams dry weight, uh, and if you add a battery, this is a 300 milliamp hour battery, which is really too small. It gives you less than two minutes of flight, brings it up to um, 87 grams. And then if you use, which is my favorite, the 525 for this quad um, milliamp hour battery, it brings it up to uh, 103 grams. Um, with this battery here, you'll get a um, good four minutes, where this one you're just barely, just over two minutes of flight time. Uh, some of the other things, it has a really great camera on it, the Nano uh, Runcam 2. Uh, it also has the Crazy B um, F4 version 3 board with 10 amp uh, ESCs. Um, it has a 200 milliwatt uh, VTX on it. 
and uh, there's a built-in uh, SPI receiver, although there is a cable on these that you could connect a uh, standalone receiver to get better range. Um, the number one thing that you're going to need to do is change out the props. These props here, uh, I've been using them push-on, so you save two grams on the uh, prop nuts. But uh, these are the Gemfan 3016. They're a fantastic prop. Um, they uh, have a lot more control than the bi-bladed props, and it has just as much speed, and um, the course times, uh, run times around the various courses are quicker, and it just handles great. So you want to, that's the number one thing uh, that you need to do is change out the props. Uh, I'm also trying some Avon 3-inch props to see how they work. They didn't quite put out as much uh, power on the thrust test. I think they're probably a little bit too much, too aggressive. Uh, so you're beyond, um, uh, maybe if I went to a smaller one, a 2.5 inch, it might be a, a little better. But I'm going to try those on the track to see how they handle and what the speeds are. Um, let's see, uh, some other things that I did to modify this. It needs a better battery strap, so I put a shorter one in. It needs a battery pad to keep the uh, battery off the uh, USB port. Uh, you also want to put a zip tie around the uh, battery um, cable there so it doesn't pull on the um, pull off the pads on the ESCs or on your uh, flight control board. Uh, the antenna here uh, that if you don't do anything, it's going to get caught in the propellers. So I put a zip tie. I drilled a second hole in here, the canopy that I just showed you, and put the uh, zip tie through but I found uh, afterwards on my new one you don't even have to do that you can just go around the bottom of your canopy and up uh, to get that tucked away so uh, and then some other things are I put some tape around all your wires because those are bowed up they're going to get caught uh, so that needs to be done but after you do all these little improvements you have yourself a really great quad uh, for about eighty five dollars let's go on to the thrust test the thrust test showed that the uh, bite blade had um, 647 grams of thrust with a power to weight ratio of 4. Point, or 7.4. The uh, Genfan 3016 tri-blade showed they had the same thrust of 647 grams with a power to weight ratio of 7.4. These are very good, but these are peak. Uh, values. Now the Avon 3-inch prop had a little less thrust at 565 grams with a power to weight ratio of 6.5. Now we are uh, doing a range test. I'm showing, um, I have two models here of the same quad. The one on the left is the older one. Uh, it ended up with a range of 225 meters and the one on the right has a range of 240 meters. These are both SPI receivers are built into the flight control board and a lot of people have been having problems with any of the SPI uh, boards uh, or receivers. I've not had that problem on most of mine. Uh, I normally get between about 220 and 260 meters where many people are just barely getting 100 meters. I do get warnings though at around 100 meters with these boards but um, the Twig uh, 115 they do have a plug in there that allows you to put an external receiver that's uh, just failing on the left it had a um, RX failure and the one on the right it was basically a VTX failure um, now we're doing lap speed testing uh, the two bladed uh, props are on the left and it's averaging 11 seconds per lap and the three bladed uh, 31 6 16 props are on the right and it's uh, quite a bit faster at 7 or 9.7 seconds per lap. The three-bladed prop uh, does corner a lot better and the handling is a lot better and I definitely recommending, recommend going to a three-bladed uh, 316 uh, gem fan prop. Uh, many people are also updating the um, beta flight to uh, 4.1 and they're putting various filters on and the uh, Jazz ESC software. Uh, I haven't done that. I found just 
putting in the new propellers work great. Um, I'm going to show you now a spreadsheet here um, that compares all my toothpicks and twigs. Um, I, these speeds are the fastest on this one. This is the most powerful one so far. It has the largest motors at 1105. I personally like the smaller, lighter 1103 uh, toothpicks versus this twig. Um, the, the extra mass, uh, you know you're flying something a little bit heavier and faster. Um, where the toothpicks uh, work better in the park that I'm at, and I, I prefer them, but I do recommend this quad. Uh, even though it has some shortcomings, I think you could, um, by changing the props and doing some other tweaking, you could get this to be a fairly decent quadcopter at uh, sale prices. It's been consistently down around $85. Um, so... I make the recommendation. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And thanks for watching.